welcome Planet Zoolers. So we're continuing on with our Kangothon Zoolittle. Please make sure you check out all these amazing creators who are all backing Kangathon to raise money and awareness for Kango Wildlife Ranch. So today we are doing a cheetah habitat and we are doing a hippo habitat, the pygmy hippos. Um, both of these animals are in the Kango Wildlife Ranch. I am not doing recreations at this point anymore. I am just building habitats within the space that I have. Um, also, if you do want to donate or find out when your favorite creators are going to be doing any streams, please go look in the description. You'll find all the information that you need there so you can schedule out um, how you want to watch or if you want to donate during a particular creator stream. Anyway, moving on. So originally my idea, my idea here was that I was going to make a small little river through both habitats and then I completely forgot that I wanted to connect both of these waterways. So I ended up with kind of just a little pool for the cheetahs and a small waterway. Oh, that's Klaus playing with a toy. Um, a small waterway and then I put a little, uh, oh goodness, the animals today. And then I put a waterfall in. So that's what we're doing right now with the cheetah habitat. Getting the water in and setting up that little spot. Originally, like I said, I really wish I had remembered that. I just got so um, in depth here, I forgot that I wanted to put water all the way through so that the hippo and the cheeto, the cheeto, the cheetos are yummy, but the cheetah um, waterways would connect. Once I remembered though, I had way too much stuff already in, so I just left it two separate little water sections. So I'm using um, the reed, the common reeds here, to kind of block off this barrier um, instead of using an actual barrier. Barrier, I cannot talk today. Anyway, um, I did use some rocks down under there as well. And I wanted the visibility into the habitats from the pathways to be pretty clear. So I wanted to not put too much plant-wise into the habitats, but I did copy off, copy over some of these plants from the entrance and just spin them around so that if people were parking, they don't get a view. They have to walk in, of course. Um, and then I borrowed the bamboo over from the entrance area right there. And then I was copying the bathroom. I didn't want to recolor it. I was being lazy. Um, so that's where the bamboo structure came from that's underneath this little shopping plaza. I think I am still in that formula from franchise mode. Um, every little area has to have its own little rest stop, so to speak. So I always put in some sort of food, drink, and either information and or a souvenir shop. Um, so those of you that do play franchise a lot, those are important to have in random, not random, but um, strategic, there's the word I'm looking for, uh, strategic placement. Um, if you're not sure where to put them, you can always check your guest happiness maps. Um, but I tend to do mine per habitat um, or loop, so to speak. So there'll be kind of one in the middle and then habitats all around as they walk or they can get to multiple habitats from the plaza that I create. Um, some habitats, I'll just put in one area for them. It depends on the design. But anyway, um, I know that is one thing that bothers a lot of players, that they feel it's a little too unrealistic to have to have so many shops to keep guests happy. Um, I've tried the, uh, what do you call it, the vending machines. Um, but I feel that they just really don't do the job unless you've already built out an area and you really need to put something in. Um, the guests really don't like them. I mean, they'll use them, 
but they're not profitable and the vending machines also will um, break down a lot so I just always started planning for them so long story short now that I've told the whole story I still put these in even when I'm in sandbox mode I just like to have a spot near each habitat where guests can fulfill their needs and stay happy and stay in the zoo so this little section here is the cheetah pit stop area I guess you can say and going back to my entrance there and borrowing that sunshade with the bamboo on top so that I could have a little sunshade over here for people that are in line and this is also how I realized I'm really used to being in hello Ruby a really big map and um, because as I built this I was like wow um, this is taking up a lot of space um, but I did go with what I saw kind of in the pictures for Kangathon that were provided to the creators as well as what I could see from the aerial shots is it did look like they had a lot of elevated paths through their cheetah areas um, and it did look like kind of one side maybe is all cheetahs but I'm not sure um, it's hard to tell from the Google images um, and so that's why I chose to kind of go with that elevated path through there um, originally I was going to put in some um, path covers but I ran out of time I spent a lot of time on the entrance and I needed to build my habitats to get them ready so I could give the file to Ravenscar because I built my part first and then Ravenscar built his and then I got the file back and I built a couple more things um, so originally I just did just to kind of get the habitats done some simple barriers um, and then when I got the file back I redid the barriers for the cheetahs and the pygmy hippos I ended up putting in rock barriers around the edges um, and redoing the one in front of the cheetahs to be a little more realistic originally I had just used the African fence which is not real realistic it kept them in you can see it there um, but that's why it's not in the speed build because I go back and I rebuild something different for them um, but I did want to keep the path elevated over the enclosure kind of like I saw in the reference pictures um, and then I put in this little staff support over here in between the two habitats. Um, I did struggle right here. I wanted to do something different than just the plain mud walls or plaster wall, which is what I kind of tied in there. Um, I wanted something different on the top. And I toyed with a couple of different ideas. I eventually just gave up and put in a log. Um, I guess I was out of creativity once I got to this point um, after the entrance it used a lot of creative power to get that done but I was still uh, pretty happy with how the how the different parts of it came together um, even though the habitats are pretty simple for the most part um, I think that they do go well with the elevation and a little bit of water and they turned out super pretty and you just you choose which way you want to go you can either go up through the cheetahs and walk around um, and then get to the pygmies or you can go the other way and walk through the pygmy first and then go through the cheetahs and it kind of brings you back to the center part of the zoo um, for the hippos I did an underwater viewing so I like to make sure the animals can get in and traverse these areas um, before I actually get too much built so I just set down a couple of things to keep the pygmy hippos from getting out while I worked out getting the underwater viewing and I decided I would just go ahead go ahead and run this little fence all the way down I end up 
putting in some rock work and a couple other things along with it and removing some of them, I think. Um, but yeah, that, that box is a pygmy hippo that had quote unquote escaped right there where I'm pulling the null barrier down. Um, so he's in the box until I get done fixing everything and then I'll release him so that I can adjust the terrain to make sure that they can get into the water. And so right now I was just more focused on getting them blocked in and then I decided I needed some trash bins. I had let people into the zoo and they were starting to throw stuff on the pathways. So I just grabbed the same one I built from the entrance and put it around in different areas on my side of the zoo. And back to uh, getting a space for these pygmy hippos so they can get into the water and also so they can get underneath the pathway. And I wanted to make sure they had access to getting to the other side of their land area as well. So they can have I think two entry points. They can get in the water and then they can get out. I laid those down so I would know how deep I needed to go in order to start attempting my path to get underneath the water so I could do an underwater viewing gallery. Um, I did the grid and then I realized I had stomped right into my pygmy hippo ramp. So I went the other direction and created a little different shape of my underwater viewing area. And then using the tunneling tool, I just brought the path straight out um, and wherever it connected, I was gonna be happy. It doesn't like to connect into curves a lot of times. So I had to actually come at it from the other angle. And then I just used the terrain tool to flatten out. And then that, that little area there, it wouldn't let me, so I just pulled um, and made a little hill, which I'll go back and put some rocks on. Um, for these, I just kind of lined up the grid, hoping I would get close, and that one on the left just would not connect in, so I end up just moving it over, and Ruby just thinks that's really funny. I was really hoping I could fit it. Sometimes if you fiddle them around, um, the path will auto connect for you so I end up just choosing that spot since I could get it to connect um, and then I opted not to do a bathroom down here I already had one at the entrance and one in the cheetah area um, and for the staff uh, restroom there or I guess a break room I really struggled to get that in there um, I was running up against the edge of the map it did not want me to put it anywhere where I had in mind so I used the tunneling tool just to make a little more room and then I'll back out and then I put the uh, building in and then redid the path. I was trying to cover the curb here um, especially since it got a little wonky as it goes through the terrain and into the habitat itself. It'll do that when you're um, tunneling into the water right at the water line. Um, it's kind of tricky to get it just right. Um, I cut out my attempts. There were several. Sometimes it's a little too low and it won't actually cut terrain into the water. The water's just a little above, um, which is why I had put those building pieces there is it kind of gives me a good starting spot. And then I'll use um, the advanced tool for the height on the path and shorten it so that elevated going up or down is a small amount so that I can fine tune my way in there. And I was really close on so the roofing uh, gets covered up a little bit. I just left it that way. I kind of thought it was neat. Um, I thought about putting some rocks in there and some of them just poked out a little too far so I left the rocks off the top on the inside. I do end up shifting all this around one more time. I really was wanting to not have to put in 
stuff to cover the curves. So I went with this log since I have a log thing going down here. And it, it turns out nice though. So I, I get a nice break and uh, different textures and colors. So it's earthy down here. And I lost my train of thought. Um, but anyways, also, if you ever see anything in my builds, I'm more than happy to share them on the workshop. I've been really busy getting all this ready for Kangathon um, and prepping for my first live stream. Um, so I haven't released anything on the workshop yet, but if you do see something that you would like to see, let me know in the comments so that I can make sure I get that out uh, if you want to use it in your own zoo. Um, also, make sure you check out the link in the description um, for all the information for Kangathon. You can go view when all the streamers are streaming um, and also all the information on Kango Wildlife Ranch, uh, who they are and what they do. They do have a nonprofit for the cheetahs and the links for the links for donating are also in there. There's several options. Um, we had a fun time on Paul's stream last night on Twitch. So I did donate um, last night and on a different one. Um, but anyway, I'll be doing a live stream on July 23rd at 8 p.m., which is Friday and Central Time. Um, we're going to tour the finished Zoo Little and then we're going to do a couple of giveaways and we'll also have Ruby the McCall, who you have, you have heard in this video in the background. Um, so we're done down there almost. I was going around and making sure that there were places for all the guests to sit. And then I went around and started with some rock work. Now technically, the path was counting as the hard shelter for my pygmy hippos, but I wanted to still give them a regular one, so I'm going to build them one. Right now I'm doing all the terrain painting, and eventually I do give them another kind of tunnel. I wanted to make sure that they didn't have to use the water to get to the other side of the habitat. And I'm doing a couple of plants, one at this side where they would go before I started building the little hut. I'm going to make out of rocks for them. Ruby's in a good mood today. She's chirping along behind me. Hmm. <laughs> She's a funny bird. Sometimes she is super entertaining. Other times she can be very frustrating. Um, she's kind of like a toddler. She has kind of the mental capacity of one as well. She does know how to say a lot. Um, however, she chooses not to speak most of the time. Um, she'll do most of her talking when she thinks nobody is really listening. So, but because I'm talking right now, she's going to talk with me. That's one of her favorite things to do. Mm -hmm. So for this side, I kind of went a little bit more on the tropical uh, theme with the mossy rocks. I liked the way that they kind of look going down through this little tunnel area into the pygmy hippo viewing and um, I thought it would give a nice feel as you were walking because you are kind of going underwater so you know that mossy look kind of just reminds me of being like I guess a like a rainforest type situation or somewhere but maybe it's a little more humid um, considering you are kind of going underground here I thought that made sense um, and then I was just extending these up into the ceiling so that it would cover up some of that rock. And then pushing my terrain around. Oh goodness, Ruby. Adding in some more rocks. I didn't want the rocks to stick out too much because I didn't want to take away any traversable area from the pygmy hippos. But I figured they couldn't really get up here. I didn't check but I don't want them really up there. Um, but I do want them to be able to go behind because that is where I was going to put the rock hard shelter when I get there. So a lot of rock work, 
went into this build um, once I got the file back too from Raven Scar. So if you didn't see that episode uh, in between, he did flamingos yesterday. So to get to his, if you didn't find him, I'll have that in the description too. But anyway, when I got the file back from Raven Scar, I noticed he had done some amazing rock work all along the edge of the zoo. Um, and so I wanted to continue that color theme and so I got rid of the uh, log barrier there and did rock work along the edges myself. So there's my little hut. It's super simple. It's just uh, a couple of rocks on their sides and then a couple of more rocks um, to make the little roof. And I went, I went for um, literally a hut look. So it's like a little stone house and giving them some enrichments. I see a lot of people who hide away some stuff with the enrichments. And so I did go back. Oh my goodness, Ruby. I did go back and add some rock work around their little mud pit there. And right now I am trying to give them a little way underneath this path here so that they can go to the other side without having to use the water to navigate. That way they get a choice. They can either stay dry or they can take the water route. Um, and then that right there is a set that was made um, by, I think it's Chief Nadia. If I said that wrong, I'm sorry, but I'll put a link to the description or in the description to that. Uh, she made some wonderful education boards for us to use and, and they are on the workshop for anybody to use. So I did use some of those in this build. So thank you for those. Um, since I was running out of time, they really came in handy. And I also just wanted to use them. Um, not sure if anybody else did, but thank you. I did. Um, I, uh, right here, I was really wanting to not take too much space, but I didn't want to just plop it on the rail. <laughs> Oh goodness, Ruby. Yeah, that would have been horrible. Um, so I went through a couple of different options and they all just looked way too big. Um, and so I ended up continuing with that bamboo theme from the entrance and from the cheetah area. Um, I just let my dogs in. So if you hear heavy panting of a dog, that would be Chloe and Klaus. They think that I need to share my lunch with them. Uh-huh, but I'm not going to uh, while I uh, do this voiceover for today. Um, anyway, so what I ended up going with was kind of something supported kind of off to the side of the path. I didn't want to have the education board take up a lot of space as they walk by, but it's still there. Um, so this was my solution to support that so it's not just hanging in the air on the edge off the uh, railing of the path there um, and I just kept the natural path elevated I liked it I liked the little horns or hooks that it has on the railing I thought it was a good little theme it went with what I had already done um, and then this is after um, I got the file back from Raven Scar I realized that I forgot water treatment so I'm hiding that off to the side the one I had put in the entrance doesn't make it all the way out here um, so I put that one there and started my rock work um, to kind of go with what Raven Scar had done to hide away that building a little bit um, getting rid of that simple little path because it just doesn't make sense not path it's a fence um, and I'm gonna make my own but I did want to make sure that the cheetahs can't get up here either so I used rocks over on this side um, I do end up just taking away the little um, log hut tunnel since I decided I would go ahead and do rock work all along the barriers of these habitats um, so I end up just taking that away and making a little cave out of 
covering the water treatment area. Um, I moved that tree around quite a bit trying to get it to fit. So once I had a nice little cluster, I just repeated that around um, and then got rid of the barrier there, just put it back to null. And to give it variation, sometimes I will flip them over, um, spin them different ways. Since this is a grouping, I just went with kind of alternating which one was up and which one was down. Um, and then I just kept that same group pretty much all the way around. And then I could see um, they could hop up onto that one. So I just added a couple of more variations to make sure that the cheetahs wouldn't get out on the back of the map there. Uh, when I was building this originally and I hadn't put in any kind of barrier, they were all null, um, they would actually walk off the map. It was kind of funny because I was thinking, oh, they'll stay on the map. They won't escape. Wrong. They do. So lesson learned. Um, sometimes I can build fast enough that they don't escape. I can just leave null barriers everywhere. Um, adding in a few more trees here and there as I was going along to kind of cover up different parts of the pathway, finishing off this side of the zoo. Um, the next episode, I will be doing a meerkat habitat and I will be doing a, uh, um, a peafowl habitat, which includes the whole zoo. That was really tricky. Um, but I did get it to work, so I was super excited. I could include the free roaming peafowls everywhere, covering up the back of that, making sure that the plants aren't coming through the sign, all weird. And I am ready to make a better barrier for my cheetahs. I kind of get distracted as I build, um, and you guys get the in order process. I don't really change the order too much. Um, so it just depends. Sometimes I just see things and I'm like, oh, let me do that while I'm thinking about it. Um, and I'll sidetrack off to finish. Um, cause I can hold my bigger ideas. Sometimes the smaller ones like those plants, I'll forget. I should start a notebook probably. Um, but I tend to be more by the seat of my pants than planning on paper. I just plan in my head. Uh, so I did this and I got over here and thought, well, uh, when I was looking at different real life cheetah er, exhibits, habitats, I noticed a lot of them have a curved in, like an, uh, like an angled piece at the top, um, probably for cheetahs that will climb on these or uh, are a little more brave, which I understand. I have two Huskies. One is an escape artist and the other not so much. Um, so some are more adventurous than others. So I wanted to add that to this barrier here. So I made the whole thing and then I uh, end up just deleting it because I wanted to add this right here. And um, it, it was just too troublesome to try to line up piece by piece, which I did do. Do I do this one? Uh, no, I gave up. So yeah, I was like, nope forget that and let's just grab one of these and go back around that was way easier than trying to line up that little top section to each one um, individually it would have taken me forever I don't have that kind of skill this is easier so I went for easier and did this round I do add in a couple here and there um, or shift it to make sure that it's not too wonky. Like right there, um, there's the turn. It's a little different direction. It's not in, it goes away. So I do add in a couple of little mesh pieces um, and went around and turned these guys so that they're kind of in the middle um, on some of them. So that one I just added a little bit of panel. So sorry for the weird view. I was trying to get a little different angle to see how it was looking from different perspectives. And then the rest of them, I just gave a little turn to and then pulled that log out some instead of having it kind of 
go over the top of the log. That way it looks like it's attached all the way through the log. Um, I toyed with a couple of different ideas right here. Um, I wanted to have it come down at an angle, um, but I didn't like, and it was just me, I just didn't like the difference. It's a little, I guess, a pattern synchronicity thing um, that the squares were going a different direction. So I just added one more right there to kind of seal it off. And then I went ahead and put these back, but with some rocks um, to get rid of the little past stumps and also to keep guests from being silly and attempting to climb on this side. Um, so it clearly defines, you know, don't go here. I guess I could have put wood a little lower and that might have discouraged that. But, um, oh yeah, I did decide to get rid of the fence. So I just did rocks. Never mind. I've, I've built so much I can't remember what I did in the end sometimes. Um, but anyway, yeah, no climbing. So there's rocks in the way. Hopefully that will keep people off. And then adding some more rocks to this side of my river that came through the entrance. I noticed I had left it a little barren um, and the other side did have some rocks so I wanted to make sure that both sides had some nice rocks to define this area and also hopefully you know keep guests from falling in. We don't want them going for a swim in there. Um, anyway also just trying to cover up some of those little nubs from the path. Um, I didn't worry about those so much on the other side uh, where the where the seats are just just in that one little area and then I was looking at what Raven had done um, just to kind of get a reference of what pieces he used um, that was the flamingo habitat I flew into really quickly um, and then finishing off my little rock cover for this water treatment area um, it proved to be a little more difficult than I thought it would be. Um, and then moving that tree one more time. I moved that tree, I don't know how many times. I should have started a tree counter at the beginning of this and put it in how many times I moved that one particular tree, all for changing this up a little on this side. But I wanted to cover up that, uh, what do you call it again? Water treatment. Um, but the barrier was kind of in my way, so I wanted to get that out of my way too. And then we're going to just copy the same rock structure I had going on for the cheetah background uh, on through the pygmy hippos. So I had to go find one that wasn't attached to a whole bunch of stuff. Um, it did need a little editing. Um, I noticed it was kind of protruding into their walking space, so I kind of had to start over. Um, my copy paste didn't work as well as I wanted it to. I wanted to make sure the hippos could still travel along the edge, that they didn't have to get in the water if they didn't want to. So that changed my plan a little bit. So I made myself a new little barrier and brought it over and struggling because I'm on the side of the map. But since that one was so long, um, it did give a little bit easier time of getting that little rock barrier in and so there's a little flip for some variation I just had to pull that other rock uh, out of the way so that I could actually fit it in there and then I left that one little section because it made a good backdrop for what was going on on the other side of the zoo and then earlier I had said I do come back and add in a little coverage on the pass here um, or curb I guess the wood curb so I used rocks to kind of blend this into the terrain and then I decided my pygmies need just a few more plants here we are with a couple of little screenshots to look at um, since I'm doing a full zoo tour as a live stream I just did screenshots at the end so you get a nice little angle and view of what it looks like around the park, but I saved this tour for the live stream. Um, so make sure that 
you check out Raven Scar Gaming. He has the other parts of the episodes to these. And so his channel will feature the next one. And I'll be live streaming for Kangathon Friday, July 23rd at 8 p.m. Central. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And may the RNG odds be ever in your favor.